Hey, my ink. What are you doing? Hey. Hi. Were you able to do anything on this competition last week or? Um, no, I've, I've been a bit uh, busy and plus my mom had a minor procedure. So I've been uh, visiting the hospitals for the past Oh, three, four days. So, thank you. yeah, I was a bit... Is she doing better or? Yeah, uh, yeah, she's feeling better now. Now uh, there, there was a minor procedure with respect to her uh, kidney ring. With, uh, Oh. yeah, uh, there, there was a stunt that that was that was put in. Uh, uh, so yeah, that that has been removed a couple of months back. Uh, so that 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 uh, uh, that was a minor pro procedure. So. Yeah, I've been uh this this week I've been too too busy uh through with 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 that and stuff. Yeah, I see. so I see. Um, let me share with you the war. You know the problem I'm running into when I try to use the LLM, and maybe uh, if you can think of some ideas that uh, I should try, then I can try those. This is not. Um, directly go you know this is just so that i can put to you some llm and learn to fine tune an llm i mean it may not give me better score than what i currently have but um and you know there's a separate discussion on what, how to improve the debata model but this is just using the llm you know the how chris said posted a um Mistral 7B pattern notebook. And Mm-hmm. even that, he says, in if you look at uh, his notebook, he says that he has used exactly the same notebook, but on a V3, V100 um, to train. But for some reason, it's not working for him on Kaggle. So he trains offline and then just loads the trained model. Or I should say, he fine-tunes offline and then loads the fine-tuned model. But I was just trying to fine-tune it on Colab. And I run into kind of two different types of problems. So I just wanted to show you what they are and see whether you have something. So this is exactly the same as what he has all this i mean it's his notebook per se and if the load path is none then he fine tunes so i made the load path none um if the load path is this then he just loads the model because he doesn't want to fine tune and uh, he wants to just uh, predict so um i used all of these things logged into a hugging face transformers Blah blah blah. Uh, ignore some of this code because I was trying a few other things. But um, here's this actual prompt, right? There's a system prompt, and then if you are in infer mode, which is when you're inferring the score, then um, you know the answer should be zero. But if you are training, then the answer is the score that's provided uh, in the training set. Right, convert it to a uh, string. And then there is a role of the user and the content is this prompt combined with the uh, actual essay, which is shoved in to the prompt, right? Because you can see that the prompt is whatever sample and then the full text. So that's the full text of the essay. And then the assistant, what it needs to do is to say the score is plus answer. Now, if it is being fine-tuned, then the answer would be this, so it would kind of know what the answer is. And if it's an inference mode, then you just say answer is nothing, and it would generate, that LLM would generate the score. Okay. Um, 
the one thing which i kind of did, do not like in editorial commenting his approach of how he does this is i wish he hadn't combined the tokenizing and the command to the llm both are kind of combined here as you can see because he wants to get a formatted sample after he has created these prompts so he says formatted sample and he tokenizes using the chat template because he's using the instruct mistral instruct uh, version 2.0 model and then the messages so the messages are these and you know token uh, because he's applying the chat template tokenizes false blah 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 if info mode then uh, you want to get rid of this slash f which otherwise appears and he tokenizes the sample um right and that's it if if the return tends are a pytorch then you give this i i don't know why he has a clone or a copy don't know that but either way it's the labels and then if you say text is true then it does the it returns the formatted sample so you can take an eye uh, look at what it looks like as a, uh, is done in the next cell so if text is true it will return what a formatted sample looks like so the formatted sample looks like you know this as then the instruction and the instruction is the system prompt plus the essay itself and the um assist uh, and also the score is is provided in this case because they we are fine tuning so the score is available for fine tuning so each time the model learns that the score is available for this essay right so you tokenize the data set you map this pre process function on to uh, and then you get rid of these columns right and you create a validation and a test um uh, data set uh, sorry not test but train so you create a training data set and a validation data set and he's using the hugging face trainer i haven't changed any of the um settings here other than obviously i give it my own safe directory because he is doing it uh, himself um and when i run this one of the errors that i get immediately uh his original setting is fp16 equals true okay and when i run it with no other change and i keep this fp16 equals true it gives me the, it immediately errors out so i don't know how he is able to fine tune with this setting because as soon as i train it it says that there is a value error and you are attempting to unscale fp16 gradients and the unscale gradients method is not hand, uh, configured to handle fp16 gradients right and in fact here is the summary of the error attempting to unscale usual arises when you try to use gradient scaling with fp16 but the gradients are already in fp16 and that may be because he says that you may be loading a pep model which already puts it in fp16 right um pep model is already configured so you don't want to do all this and you either make fp16 is false or you just don't provide anything okay so i change and comment out this fp16 is true which is what he has and i run this and two things happen right one is it runs uh, i get to it in a minute another comment that i would have is typically and i don't know whether you have seen this but i have stated that enough um examples of other notebooks where people are using lora to fine tune and typically what happens is that this lora alpha is 2x of r 
Um, mm-hmm. But for some reason, in his setup, he has it as one half of R. So you can see that R is 32 in lower alpha is 60. Okay, but be that as it may, uh, that's why I have this comment. But I leave it with his values so as to exactly do what he does, right? And when I run this, the one interesting thing that I notice, uh, I've just added a, from a, a, a another notebook that I saw this, I added, you know, this uh, utility function where it tells me, uh, I added a print trainable parameters and it tells me that what the total parameters are and what are the trainable parameters and what's the percentage, okay? So you can see uh, now one thing here is you see that the trainable parameters are actually 7 billion, close to, right? Now that concerns me because if he was you, if this model already had PS16 as this message seems to say, and I've turned off that P16 is true, right? Because it errors out. So I've made it nothing. Um, and I, I can show you another notebook where I even tried with FP16 equals false. But anyway, uh, the point being So that what's, what's the uh, default uh, uh, data type that's being used there? Eh? So you have turned F16 is false. Uh, here, I don't know, but my guess is this is 32 bit, right? Because it's a 7 okay. billion and I, I'm guessing, I don't know, okay? But the interesting thing you can see is it's about 63% of the parameters uh, because I'm only training 4 billion, that billion, yeah, uh, sorry, uh, 46 million as compared to 7 billion here. You see, this is uh, 4 here. So this is 7.287 billion, of which I am only training 46 million right okay right um mm-hmm. as i said so, so it's I, it's it's the standard lora configuration kind of uh, uh not standard because of that thing that i pointed but it's some configuration that reduces the parameters anyway from about 7 billion to only 46 million right mm-hmm. um so I keep going, um, and once I get here, and I, so here's, you know, I'm training it now, okay? Or, sorry, again, I keep saying train, but actually, I mean, because of the verbiage used here, which is train, but it's actually fine-tuning, mm-hmm. right? So when I fine-tune, two things happen. As I told you, when I check the... Um, if I have FP16 equals true, then I get this error, value error. So I, to work around that, I say FP16 is false and I, and it proceeds to train, but it doesn't actually train because of two reasons. One, it's, so this is what happens when I have FP16 equals True. So I remove it and I run it. And when I do that, then uh, what tends to happen, and I don't have it in this notebook, but I've run previously, and I'll show you in a different notebook. Uh, this one, quote unquote, ran to completion, right? Because I have, let's see, where did I? Um, and you can see that here itself, the model is being loaded in torch.float16. You see that? Mm-hmm. Right? So in a sense, when you asked earlier, the data type is actually float16. And the reason for float16 and not bf16 is we have discussed this before, right? That mm-hmm. uh, we can't use bf16 on Kaggle, so I have to stick with float16. Okay. 
right? So it is, I'm assuming, loading it in float 16, the, this particular model, because I have specified the data type to be float 16. But that, uh, I think, think so that the LoRa configuration that you had, it's 32 bits, since you haven't included uh, anything. So that model, I think so, it's 16. But uh, the LoRa phone configuration, I think so, it's 32. And you're trying to, uh, in the next phase, maybe you're trying to combine them in a way that... Uh, no, uh, it, it isn't, right? Like, in this case, for example, I'm saying FP16 is false, right? In the training arguments, mm -hmm. not in a LoRa config, because my LoRa config doesn't specify anything with respect to the data type. Yes, yes. Right? So the mm -hmm. LoRa config is not giving any data type. The only thing is in while using the training arguments provided to the trainer, I say FP16 is false in this case. But if I don't do that, you've already seen, and if I make this FP16 is true, which is what Chris Diote had, then it's unable to train. It gives me a value error because mm -hmm. of this reason, right? So I have to do this in order to get past this error. Now, um, when I'm, so past this, I get past it and I train, and um, what's funny is, um, you know, in this case, when I ran this notebook, it ran, um, but you can see that after the first step, the training loss goes to zero and there's nothing that happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, one. Second, and it trains for about half an hour or it fine tunes for half an hour, but nothing is happening. The model isn't, I don't think anything is happening to the model. Now, the funny thing about this is this thing worked when I set the, uh, or this thing ran, but when I tried it a couple of days back, and with the exact same thing, um, you know, I fixed the, if tried to fix this error, made it like, um, let's see whether this is the notebook I have. Um, No, this is a debugger thing. Never mind. Sorry. So my point is, it's not fine tuning at all. You can see, you know, I'm trying some five thousand steps or whatever, and it's not doing anything. And because of that, when I train the model, all it uh, or when I apply infer the model, all it does is it just gives the output three because you can see that I think. He has it somewhere in his code that if, you know, um, just make the default answer to be three if you don't get an answer. Right. Uh, so Sorry, I didn't get the, the default answer should be three if you don't get an answer. I don't know. Yeah, something he I saw that code somewhere. I'm trying to locate it now. Uh, or he or um, I saw that somewhere, but in this case, I don't see it in the pre-processed code. Um, And you can see it's again the 63%, blah, 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 run it. None of this, nothing happens after like one step, I get a training loss and then after that there's nothing, right? And validation score, right? So um, tokenized sample, you want to generate the stuff, ah, here. 
So when you are doing this and doing validation or inference, then you can give a different max sequence than the max sequence that you provided while training. And here it says, try this and use the prediction that it provides, right? Which is the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah, this is right? pretty straight. Yeah. Except if you get an exception here, for some reason there is it not available, append a three. Mm -hmm. so why are you appending a three here? Uh, that's what he, Chris had in his code. So basically he's okay. saying if for some reason your LLM is unable to score the essay, score it in the middle. Ah. Okay. So, you know. Uh, middle it, is with respect to the... The classes, right? One through six. Yeah. So you score an essay as being average. Mm -hmm. So instead of scoring it a one, two, four, five, six, score it a three. If for some reason your LLM is unable to provide a score, because if it's able to provide a score, then there'll be no exception. So you'll pass right through it. Mm -hmm. So bottom line, it just says, hey, if for some reason the inference is not able to work, predict a three. Mm -hmm. If for some reason the LLM is not able to infer, I should say, right? Now, what you can see because there is pretty much no fine tuning happening at all, what ends up happening is all of my predictions are just threes. Yeah. Right? So I can't figure out if it's exactly the same thing that Chris is saying that he's using, what the heck? I mean, I can't figure out what's going wrong or why this thing doesn't work at all when he says that he's able to train it and get like 0.7, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I... And I've been, you know, trying various things, but I kind of tried to use instead of the trainer, he obviously is using the actual trainer, right? You can see he's using the trainer. So another thing I tried was instead of using trainer, which is the hugging face trainer, you can use uh, what most people use when they use LoRa is this thing, FFT, FFT trainer. Um, I think it stands for um, fine tuning trainer. I think I don't know what the S is for, right? And I tried that and gave it exactly the same thing, right? And when I try it with SFT trainer, here is what I get. Um, it says you pass packing equals false to the SFT trainer but you didn't pass a data set text field or a formatting function argument. Okay. Um, and, you know, I don't know what either of these things are. I but, think the packing is equals false is the default argument that's being passed here. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah so so they, I could they, potentially set, say yeah. packing equal yeah. true and right, but you know, that gave some other errors. So I'm just unable to get this simple fine tuning of a language model to work. Mm -hmm. Using, so I was just wondering, you know, since I don't know whether you have fine tuned any language models, but, um, and, and in another case, which is more recently I, last I... week when I, yeah, yeah. I haven't faced this kind of issue yet. Uh in ways that you're you after the first epoch kind of your loss goes to zero. So Yeah. 
So I was just wondering whether, uh, you know, and the other thing I tried, I said, okay, this is with the Mistral 7 billion model, right? So mm-hmm. forget that. Let me try a 5.3 model with Unslot, the thing that you had pointed to, right? Yeah. Uh, using Unslot. So I just took that notebook and kind of, um, I think there was some Unslot example. Mm-hmm. So I, did that and um, you know did the four bit models and I was going to try it with uh, yeah five three okay right um, now this is just four bit, if you want it four bit, then you can use these. But I said, you know, hey, okay, I don't care about four bit, but given that 5.3 mini, I think is fairly small. I forget now how small it is. Do you know off the top of your head? I think so. We will have to take a look at the uh, files and uh, Three point eight. Okay. So it's three point eight, right? So um, yeah, but and it tells you right that it's, it's, it's loading. It's, con- it's quantized, right? So yeah, it, it's saying it's loading it in four bit also. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. To that, set up LoRa, right? And in this case, it's, you know, I don't know, but again, I left it as what it was in the unslot example. I think R and LoRa, see, they're more one-to-one in this instead of one-half. You see what I'm saying? Sorry? The R to LoRa alpha ratio is one is to one as okay. compared to what this guy had, uh-huh. which was one half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see? Mm-hmm. R is 32. So R by LoRa alpha is one half here. Uh, R by LoRa alpha is one here. You see that? Mm-hmm. But anyway, again, I have typically seen R to LoRa alpha of two, but okay, it's one, it's fine. That's something just to keep in mind. But anyway, um, blah, blah, blah. I set this up similar to what the guy did to the data set. This code is the same as what Chris had, right? Mm. Uh, this is where I don't know whether this is the correct way to set it up, right? And the difference is instead of that uh, angle bracket S, here it's angle bracket with, a, with this end yeah, token. Yeah, this is the end, end token right now. Right, right. Uh, so I made the change. You see that this end appears here. Mm -hmm. Right, and there is also this user and assistant thingy. Uh, So I map that to this. Um, And then I train the model. I don't know whether I should collate it or not. Uh, I don't know what you think. Um, Right? And in the SFTP trainer, there are some parameters that I'm unsure of because here they have something called train data set is data set. But in my case, I have a train and an eval, right? Um, that we have generated here. Right? So I give it two different data sets. So I comment out this thing. 
I don't know whether I need this or not. Um, blah, blah, blah. And then I do provide a collator. And then um, I say in this case, FA16 is true. And I get the, you know, uh, the, and I run it and I get to share. Yeah, it's again the seat and half. This is, uh, I think this is all the CUDA uh, with respect to the CUDA. Uh, let me try to get to... I mean, I can obviously ask it saying explain the error or search for this. But again, my point, I mean, and these are from the old run that they had. But my point is, even a simple thing like fine tuning uh, LLM on this data set is, doesn't seem that simple. I've been trying, of course, I didn't try gamma with this, but you know, it doesn't matter, right, whether it's gamma or the problem in my view seems to be the way that I'm setting up the data using this particular prompt, there should be a better way maybe to do the prompting of the model and to kind of uh, keep the tokenizing out of the prompting. Whereas here he tokenizes it right here. So there's something with respect to preparing the data set that I feel um, that I'm not doing correctly. But that's why I was curious whether you'd be interested in trying this so that at least we can figure out using this data set as an example, can we fine tune LLMs on this data set and get it to predict? Mm -hmm. As you yeah, see, I've been okay. taking multiple attempts, but somehow I'm not able to make any tangible progress. Mm -hmm. so if you have any ideas or if you want to try this yourself and figure it out or, you know, see. Um, we can, I can post share this the, in, yeah, yeah. Yeah, kind, I can share the, uh, the notebooks. Um, you know, with you directly. I think I have your email, so I can just open these two notebooks on my Google Drive to you, uh, hmm. share them with you once we are but, done. But uh, I think uh, I will require, since you are using Cola Pro, and um, I don't have yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. So that might be a problem, but you know, you could use the unslot. I, will, I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will do, try try to do that locally then in in on on my machine then. If yeah, right, it fits right. on the eight eight gigs of VRAM. Yeah, yeah. I, that might require. Uh, you know, this is mini. I don't know whether there is anything below five three mini, uh, or there's you know a, a smaller gamma. Uh, it doesn't. To me, I'm not so worried right now about which model LLM I use and the score. I just want the process of fine tuning on a data set to work for me. And yeah. with LoRa and PAST, and because, you know, for the particular data set that a notebook uses as an example, it seems to work. But when I step out and try to convert this data set as an, using this data set as an example, it's just horribly a stumble. So I just want to get past this hurdle of learning to convert a data set and utilize PAST, QLORA, LORA, and the SFT trainer or trainer to fine tune a model. Yeah, I've I, done that. I'm unable to do this simple task. Yeah, yeah. 
on a couple of as, as i've uh, alluded to earlier i've done that pre previously for fsdp i was using the exotel lib library i've done done that but uh, yeah i i used a6000 on a uh, custom uh, uh, yeah and i have you know in fact i was going to tell you that what is really funny is last week when i ran this and i fixed this and i ran it it actually gave me it ran for one cycle gave me a uh, legitimate value much like it does in this case right it ran for one it trained for one then it went to the second step and then it gave me an out of memory error when i tried it with l4 but what you can see is right here it has successfully run i mean successfully in course because obviously it didn't do anything but it at least completed the run right meaning it didn't fine tune but it went for 5000 step in another instance when i ran it it ran and as soon as it got into the second step it, com it complained about memory now the one thing i noticed that i had done differently between those two and i'm just seeing it right now is I believe in this case, I specify the max sequence length to be, where the heck is it? Uh, no, I'm specifying it to be 1024. It's just that the training set is 5120, which actually, you know, in my, this notebook, I am even using a smaller training set. Just for all the scrolling, I'm trying to get to the yeah here. I'm using only 3,072 rows versus 5120, and when I do that, now all of a sudden it even gives me a memory error with L4. Of course, I have an A A100, but getting A100 are very hard, and I have to run it at like late in the night or very early in the morning before everybody gets up. I have to get up and grab a A100 and that kind of stuff. So that's a pain. So it's kind of, you know, all kinds of problems that I'm running into. So anyway, I'll share these two. If you can take a crack at just the process of fine tuning with this data set, any LLM, Gamma, Phi3, Llama, if it's an even smaller one, Llama 3 billion, whatever. If I'm just wanting to get through the process of fine tuning an LLM with with a couple of different data sets rather than, hey, as soon as I step off whatever anybody else has done as a reference notebook, I'm unable to do anything. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that's that. And then of course there is the whole approach I'm Still thinking through. Uh, by the way, Steve is way up in the gold medal category now. He's like on his position is number twelve or number twenty or something way up there because he managed to get to eight two three. So I've sent him a note saying, "Hey, can you share some of what you've been trying?" And uh, I mean, of course, he already mentioned AWP and uh, you know using the additional data from the other essays and that kind of stuff, which I haven't again. To do those things, you need an A4 because uh, I'm doing it on Colab because already um, you can't train on um, the Debutter small model itself on Kaggle with two T4 states close to six hours. So if you try anything with a large, I think you have to do it offline. You can't do it online. So I have it set, it set up offline, but I need an A4 and I've been struggling, as I said, to get an A4. So that's something I have been waiting on to try. But that's what I need to do is, you know, increase the folds, try to combine with AWP, uh, those kinds of things, which I haven't gotten around to yet. But Steve has uh, managed to get to 823, so it puts him like at I think uh, 12th or 20th or something in the competition. So hopefully you can get a goal this time. Mm -hmm.
cool then okay i i think think so we should uh try this and uh work towards the i i i think there there was a notebook too i i'm not let me try to yeah the aes2 which adds a threshold so that has a 823 score oh okay the new one yeah the new new one uh ah, okay, i okay. don't know what kind of threshold they have added to oh, this oh the thresholding is fairly the thresholding is fairly easy uh, i think i had shown you this last time right uh, not not the this we, we we talked about the modeling with fb scoring correct correct but what i'm saying is i am sure the thresholding that he is using is the same concept of thresholding that i said last week which is if you are using regression to um determine the score is a 1 or a 2 or a between how do you determine what regression value should snap to a 1 or should snap to a 2 you can do a simple thing like round uh or clip and round right mm-hmm. but that may not give you the best result because what you can do is you can sweep by sweep i mean at every uh, remember the code i had, i think i shared last week um let let me try to share my screen then uh quickly we can go through it yeah so this is the thresholds uh yeah i think so they have used this this guy yeah this is yeah, kind of prediction of course basically- yeah yeah so basically what he is trying to do is trying to determine the points between 1 and 2 that give you the best score and you instead of arbitrarily picking something saying oh if it is greater because a rounding or a clipping does something on a fixed parameter right like it will round and when a rounding is applied then a rounding means that if it's less than 0.5 it is snapped towards the lower value if it's greater than 0.5 it is snapped towards the higher value that's what yeah, a round yeah. does i'm i right? i know that uh, that that kind kind of a rounding but i'm uh, unsure of how this is being cut into the prediction fold i mean to say no no so so that's what i'm uh, trying to explain and in fact chris beot or somebody and uh, i can post the relevant i have it bookmark so i can post it i just don't want to open that thing because it has like 70 50 tabs so it will take a while to open but um, there's a discussion of thresholding that somebody has in fact if you are on kaggle you can just open kaggle then i'll quickly take you to that notebook so what it points out is what you can do is if you have a, a value between 1 and 2 uh, as an example then you can take plus or minus 0.01 and sweep through 1.01 1.02 1.03 or you can start at 1.5 and at, you can go through plus or minus 0.01 and determine the threshold which will give you the best score so that what you end up doing is you for every gap so for example for a gap between 1 and 2 you pick the threshold which gives you the best score then for gap between 2 and 3 you pick the threshold which gives you the best score so instead of just using 1 and 1/2 2 and 1/2 3 and 1/2 4 and 1/2 5 and 1/2 you end up using the threshold values and that improves your score do you do you understand the concept at least mhm yeah the threshold values are yeah uh, uh those 
kind of like predicts those folds in a particular uh, clip. So each round kind of has that uh, particular uh, that uh, uh, that uh, how do I put it that uh, that uh, I don't know the exact term for for it, but. Uh, uh, that metric kind of is clipped based on uh, uh, the uh, score that, that we have between the, the scores. So uh, the labels here are 1, 1, 2, 6. So that particular threshold is clipped here. But yeah, I kind of like get it, but uh, I'm yeah, still... In fact, if you... Can you go to Quaggle for a minute? Yeah. Uh, these These are the this discussions, I think so. Do you want want me to go yeah. to the discussion staff? Uh, no, no. Just search for, um, uh, yeah, search for the SVR notebook that Chris Diote has. Um, yeah. Okay, Rapid go to starter. his SVS, yeah, this SVS starter. Okay, go to the comments. Okay. Um, Oh, hang on, hang on. Um, no, not that. Okay. Keep going down. Yeah, so these, these are all the comments here. I don't, don't think so. Oh, okay. It's present here. Um, it, it might then, be in some other notebook or some other. Um, actually, no, uh, if you just actually then go to his notebook itself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, keep going down. Uh, what's the? I think so. You can see the. These are the fifteen folds. The. Right, right, right. Yeah, there, there. Just, just yeah. stay there. Stay there. No, sorry, go yeah. up a little bit. Uh, these, these go are yeah, yeah. Exactly. So this is where he's, and this is exactly what he is. The other guy is doing. He's just determining the threshold. And uh, like I said, if you go down, you can find out what he is doing. Is mm -hmm. uh, uh, hang on, just there. So v is plus equals sine into zero zero one. So he's just plus minus, and that means, and if you look there, what he does is adds or subtract, and if you go up, he'll have the uh, value to be one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, and stuff. Uh, if you go up a little bit, uh, da, 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 because we, yeah, V is label K or something he has, and uh, you see this threshold is this, Right, he starts mm -hmm. off with these thresholds and then steps up or down from them by 0 0.001 and scores each time he finds, each time he takes a step, he scores to see whether he's getting a good score or a better score, stores the better score and stores the threshold which is giving him the better score and steps through that for each of these five ranges. Mm -hmm. And picks out the particular threshold values which gives him the best score. Hmm. Yeah, I can see see that. So, uh, so this, that's this uh this loop that stops is less than steps. That's kind of the main uh uh. It's for the five thresholds, I suppose. No, this is yeah, yeah. Problem. No, in fact, you, you here is where he does this, right? V is threshold of K. So the V is threshold of K, and K goes from zero to 
k in the range of 5 so it goes from yeah. 0 to 4 and mm-hmm. because there are five of these values and then each time you do sign it can be plus or minus sign so you do for sign yeah for sign in one or minus one which means a plus one or a minus one so in each case you do a plus 0 0 1 so you do one Oh, sorry, you're uh, breaking up a bit. Yeah, so all I'm saying is you just step through 1.5 plus or minus 0.01 until you find the best score. And that's what you determine to be your threshold. So this is kind of a early stopping or this is... Uh, no, 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 uh, nothing to do with early stopping. It's more after you have done all the predictions... and you have the values you want to determine at which point in your regression should you take the value to be so that you determine that if the threshold between 1 and 2 the best score is obtained when your threshold is 1.52 then you don't choose a default of 1.5 you choose 1.52 and if you don't do this and you just use a round clip blah 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 then you would just end up with a threshold of 1.5 that's not necessarily the best threshold so if you go down i think in his notebook he has the plots which will give you the see and he has determined hang on um he has determined the best threshold to be these values you see these values mhm now if you had not done this threshold search you would have just stuck with 1.5 but mm. your score is better if you choose the threshold to be 1.7 what does that mean it means that any prediction that your regression does which is below a 1.7 you predict it to be a 1 you make that a 1 and anything above one point whatever 749 you make that a 2 but if you are not determining this best threshold after you have done all your predictions if you are not choosing the best threshold then what will happen is you will choose 1.5 and the 1.5 score as you do the search as it just illustrated it gives you a poorer score when you choose your cut off point to be 1.5 so that if your prediction is 1.5 then it is snap to a 1 whereas what this sweeping of thresholds and the threshold search is telling you is wait until 1.749 to pre- con- and continue until you get your if your prediction is predicting 1.7 still make it a 1 give the sa a one score until a threshold value of 1.749 is exceeded then give it a two and between 1.749 to 2.53 you give it a value of two if it goes above 2.53 then you begin to give it a value of three so between so, 2.53 and 3.44 give it a value of three so that's a so, post prediction adjustment you do after you determine the actual regression predictions using this kind of a threshold sweep so if you go down further hey here you see this so what this chart this is what we went through last week too what this chart clearly shows is until you get to 1.749 your score is not the best but when you get to 1.749 is when you get the o best qwk cv score so what this threshold is dependent on is not just your prediction it's also dependent on what evaluation metric you use because this threshold will not be the same if for example you used f1 score to be the evaluation metric <laughs> between i think think that this uh uh the this 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 loop is for the stop metric here i uh, uh, 
this metric is no it's actually the... determining the threshold it's basically to determine best threshold go through the code and you'll figure it out it's for determining okay. the best thresholds but they say here early stopping so i kind of like no that that that's not early stopping he is just saying that in this context if metric is less than best then stop so okay. he he's he's just using this terminology for what he is doing within this piece of code it has nothing to do with early stopping when you're fine tuning or training or whatever yeah 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 Mm-hmm. So I think this exact thing, the guy is applying to the AES two methodology. If you go back and look at it, the AES two notebook. I was thinking about it too. So he's just done it, which is good. Then we can just adopt that. So. only this is the threshold thingy that uh, they have uh, implemented here no yeah. so he just ad- added the thresholding the exactly so he just added the thresholding to the notebook that already does all the prediction so all he has done is applied the thresholding idea to the predictions mm. like a, and like i told you that's a post prediction exercise that you can do so it has nothing to do with the model and nothing to do with actually um what initially your model predicts because it's a post model prediction post processing step that improves your score mhm so i was wondering this uh, q wk or uh, does it have an effect on the, the final uh that training that oh yeah the final metric is also qwk so that's yeah. why it's directly related to what your final metric is okay yeah so this this is the uh i think so the same code that we just looked at in the svr node notebook yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah. That's, that's why i was saying that that's probably what he has done when you said threshold then i knew what the guy was doing yeah that's the exactly the same thing yeah so oh no nice. that's why i said i i i know what he is doing mhm who so, so yeah. everything else is that, the same yeah other than that uh, no editions i think so on this note notebook yeah yeah exactly so he's basically just added thresholding on top and that improves the score mm cool this was uh, nice okay okay if you have time take a look at and i'll share as soon as we are done the uh, i'll open up those two notebooks like you said you need to modify it to run it on a less no, memory no. case but it, it doesn't matter what i'm interested in is in getting any llm with any method like slot and slot or qlua yeah, or whatever on this particular find... date data set yeah uh, exactly this, exactly yeah this exercise is good kind of for yeah uh, uh yeah. uh since i think think so uh, there were some extensions to the dataset too uh, that steve had posted i don't know if steve or chris yeah 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 there is thing. there is uh, i forget what it's called it something probability some some yeah there is and it's still it's available there's a lot uh, you can download that and combine it with the existing dataset yeah okay. basically in fact a large proportion of the existing data set is from that data set except that this set is bigger and it has some additional information that you can care to use or not use hmm yeah and in fact what some people have done is that particular competition 
that data set, I should say, has was used in another competition. But the more interesting thing is that data set provide you with topic names for the essays. Okay. And what some people have figured out is that I think we discussed this last week too, if I recall. What some people have figured out is uh, using that data set and the current data set, what the topics of the essays are on the current data set. And when you include the topics in your splitting of the folds, when you group the essays by topic and then stratify it according to the score, then your CV improves. Your, it, that doesn't mean your score improves, but the CV prediction is closer to the um, leaderboard prediction, uh, mm. your leader, or I should say score. So using the topics from that and stuff. So somebody has even published, I think it's publicly available, Chris Diot somewhere points to it, um, a, ma a, a, a topic list for all the essays in the current competition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you could use that if you wanted your CV score to improve vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the leaderboard score. So your CV score do a better job of predicting what your actual leaderboard score would be. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have discussed about this previously, I suppose. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, okay, okay. Euros are going on. So, which kind of team are you rooting for, or are you watching it? Or? No, I'm not uh, much of a soccer fan. So, um, I don't follow the soccer thing much. Okay. Yeah, much more of a basketball. And then uh, soccer. I mean, I watch World Cup soccer, and but that's about the extent of my soccer engagement. I don't watch the um, European Cup or um, there's I think club related stuff too. Like right? like people get uh, into Arsenal and Manchester United and all that. I forget what the cup is for that, but club play and then Real Madrid and Barcelona and all that. And I, I, okay. I mean, I know of those teams, but I've never been into it. Okay. So you don't watch them closely enough. Yeah. Yeah. Not. So what, uh, what team uh, do you have a lot of interest in that or? Uh, there's Germany. That's uh, uh, currently in the Euros that I'm rooting for. Uh, there's France. Uh -huh. uh, so these two teams, um, I think, may win the cup, but upsets may happen anytime. So, yeah. Yeah, the only thing I know from watching the World Cup is, uh, historically, Germany plays a very boring style of game. They just keep kind of passing in the backfield for a while and then suddenly strike and then go back to that boring game. I mm -hmm. In the World Cup, I typically root for you know, the South American teams like Brazil is my favorite, but, you know, I can also root for Argentina, but I don't care much for um, any of the European teams. Occasionally, the uh, Dutch guys play really well. But of course, France did a couple of times with, um, you know, Zidane when he was the captain and stuff. And then who is the new guy who, uh, in the last World Cup, uh, he made a big splash. I forget the name of the guy uh, who is their star now. Now, uh, which team are you referring to? France. Uh, Mbappe? Mbappe, yeah, Mbappe. Mbappe. But before Mbappe, there was Zidane, right? Yeah, there were multiple. Yeah, Zidane was one of the greats too. Right, Zidane was their captain in the World Cup previously, I thought, uh, and stuff. Okay. Okay, enjoy that. 
and we'll meet again uh, next week yeah then share share yeah will you share it on yeah. the public slack channel or you, will you dm me the no i i i'd rather because there aren't too many i'd rather just put it share it with you personally um since i have your email i think i should be able to do that okay cool sounds good we'll do yeah yeah thanks bye take care then bye you too